Sure. We are live. And welcome everyone to the October 4th, 2022 council meeting. Uh, prior to the open session, uh, there was a closed meeting which ran longer and apologized than, than usual. It was moved by Councillor Keith and second by Councillor Borneman that pursuant to section 239, 2 and 3 of the Municipal Act SO 2001 C25 is amended. Council of the Corporation, the Town of Perry Sound moves to a special meeting closed to the public in order to address matters pertaining to e litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, winter maintenance of unassumed road allowance, and F advice that's subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose, winter maintenance of unassumed road allowance. Meeting was held. Um, I'd like to acknowledge at this time that we're on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe people under the Robinson Huron Treaty of 1850 and the waterways traveled by the Metis of our region. Are there any additions or prioritization of the agenda? Nope. Okay. May have a mover and seconder for the adoption of the agenda. Councillor McCann, Councillor Borneman. That the council agenda for October 4th, 2022 be approved as circulated. All in favor? That's carried then. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? Nope, not seeing any. Um, the minutes have not been prepared for circulation yet, so there's no adoption of the minutes at this particular time. Uh, questions of staff? Councillor Keith. Yes, thank you, Mr. Cairns. Can you advise um, what the uh, strategy is in reference to tree removals? Because um, there are a number of citizens that have been concerned not only of some of the dead trees or in the separation between um, the Coast Guard base and the condominiums there, but there's a number of dead trees around the community and that are quite large and quite tall. And what is the policy there? Because some citizens nationally are getting pretty concerned. Certainly through you, Your Worship. So I would encourage um, any residents or anyone that identifies a tree of concern to let us know at Public Works, first of all. Um, staff can make an assessment of, uh, first of all, the location of the tree and whether it's in a municipal road allowance property, or if it's of concern for the municipality, because there are some allowances for uh, us to control trees on private property if, they, if they're considered hazardous or parts of them are considered hazardous. So uh, staff prioritize the removal of trees. We try and um, prune trees as much as possible without complete removal wherever possible. So we will do an assessment of the trees and if if they are hazardous, certainly we'll arrange for the removal. Sometimes it involves the utilities if they're in close proximity to uh, power lines, but I'd certainly encourage folks to let us know at Public Works and then we can start the process from there and help them. If it's on private property, we'll certainly give them some advice on who to contact, um, if, especially if it's a power company. Thank you. I have one other question. Um, Sunset Avenue, if one walks around that area there, that street there, uh, it seems to me is atrocious. It's even worse than um, Hillcrest Avenue. And I'm wondering in that area, because we've done an asset management plan, would you have any idea where maybe in priority list uh, that uh, uh, road is going to be examined? Because I understand also there's some infrastructure uh, issues under there, but anybody that just does a real walk, I mean, that's terrible. Can you advise? Through your worship. Um, I can't specifically on where it sits on our current list, but what I can say in general is that, uh, and we've had some inquiries due to our, our paving projects that are going on right now, and folks are wondering how candidate roads are chosen. So we look at the infrastructure, the buried in ground infrastructure, as well as the surface. So um, and they all play together in terms of uh, what processes we can use to rehabilitate 
whether it's a complete reconstruction, is it a surface reconstruction, um, those kinds of things. I can take a look at Sunset. I, I don't know off the top of my head right now, um, but certainly the we don't want to get into the process of repairing surfaces if we're going to be uh, in the near future having to consider in-ground infrastructure replacements. And, and I appreciate that. And thank you very much. Um, certainly some of the citizens on that street have told me there's been patches upon patches in about 20 years now. It seems to be with the average comment that they've been promised that uh, something would be done in that area. So if you could uh, take a look at it, because like I said, just a, a walk, let alone driving your vehicle around that, uh, I think you should have a Jeep. Certainly, uh, through your worship too. I just wanted to mention, uh, in, as part of our paving project program this year, um, obviously there's the two large sections on either end of town, the four lane sections of the the old provincial highway. Um, but we are, in addition, um, doing Georgina and Park Lane, which are are smaller. But we want to make sure that we're equi equitably treating as many roads as we can without we're not solely concentrating on the on the major um, volume roadways. So we will take a look at that as well. Actually, while we're on roads, Mr. Kearns and I did have a conversation today about roads and repair and COVID and how that went on and, you know, rough spots and patching potholes and that sort of thing. And Mr. Kearns, you had, I think, more that you wanted to add with regard to you know the process and there were a couple of years we couldn't get there was material we couldn't get or couldn't do and that sort of thing so maybe you could just highlight some of those things and so, so the general public's aware of some of the issues we were facing yeah. sure thank you your worship um so obviously at covid and we've all heard supply chain issues and, and um, workforce shortages and uh that's something I think most municipalities experienced, and uh, we were unable to complete a whole lot of capital works through 2020 and 2021. So the, this, uh, the paving program this year is, is large and extensive, despite the fact that it may not cover a lot of lane uh, meters of roadway overall. But um, we did experience through 2020, it was very difficult. Uh, asphalt supplies, whether we were actually going to be able to get things, whether companies were going to be available. Um, I think there's been a backlog um, that everyone has been experiencing. So we're, we're in the phase of making sure we can move forward. And uh, we are in the process of looking at some newer technologies. So we did look at the 3D milling and we went through that and the reasons why we're looking at some of those new technologies, but there's also new technologies related to different products. Um, we're actually uh, currently investigating some uh, cold constructed asphalt pro products, which are able to be manufactured um, more on site, placed with traditional paving equipment, and perhaps allow us to uh, more effectively cover more roadways, uh, replace surfaces more efficiently. So those are things we're looking at. Uh, how do we uh, how do we stretch the dollars that we have available to make sure that we can treat all of the infrastructure um, outside of traditional hot mix, which uh, you know hasn't? There's various mixes out there, but it hasn't changed a whole a whole lot over time. But there's a lot of technology that's being advanced in terms of uh, allowing us to consider new products that may perform better in our climates, um, which will give us longer lasting roads and hopefully allow us to do more um, with the same amount of dollars. Thank you. That's good. Any other questions? Uh, Councilor Bornemann. Well, it's good to see most of the paving completed on the, uh, the major thoroughfares, Mr. Cairns. Uh, has the secondary contract for these smaller areas uh, started yet? And uh, is there a schedule for different spots? Uh, uh, are, are people being warned in advance of, of when work they should expect work to commence? Through your worship. So they have started the secondary contract. Um, the pulverization of uh, Park Lane, I believe, perhaps happened today um, or 
over the last short period of time, uh, Georgina and McFarland Street are scheduled as well. So they will be occurring over the next two weeks. So they're doing a full depth uh, pulverization of, of the road, regrading. There's two applications of calcium chloride, which help to stabilize the base of the road in advance of paving. So you'd be looking at about a two week period. And uh, there was notice that went out. Hopefully um, folks received that. And certainly if they need more information, I'd en encourage them to get in touch with us and we'd be happy to discuss it with them. But um, over the next two weeks, we should see that process playing out. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. Correspondence, Mr. Yes, Your Worship, we just have one item of correspondence from um, Dave Chalk of Deepwater Point, concerned about his taxes. He uh, indicates that he doesn't receive certain services at that location, and in comparison to other municipalities, believes his taxes are 30% higher, so is looking for a decrease. Okay. Thank you. Is there any staff of any? Comment, Mr. Harris. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Chalk certainly raises uh, an interesting question. Uh, in that regard, there's four points that I'd like to, to mention this evening. Uh, the main driver that determines uh, an individual property taxes is their property assessment. Factors such as location on, of your property, the lot size as a waterfront property are the main factors in determining value. Uh, property assessment is provided by MPAC and isn't provided by the town of Perry Sound. Um, property taxes are levied based on the services that are provided to the residents and businesses at large. Your property taxes aren't determined by individual services to specific properties. Um, he mentioned in his letter that uh, he doesn't have water and sewer services and just for the benefit of Mr. Chalk and the public, uh, water and sewer services aren't funded by property taxes. They're entirely funded through user fees. So uh, his property taxes are, uh, he doesn't have water and sewer, so his property taxes uh, don't include any water and sewer and he's not uh, contributing to that cost at all. The more, probably the more important point um, and, and the last point I'd like to make is that uh, the issue that creates the largest differential in, in his letter he refers to a 30% differential between his property taxes and uh, property taxes of similar properties in other communities uh, is the uh, that the town is responsible for providing urban municipal infrastructure that's necessary to support services such as education, social uh, housing, health care, other social services. And the cost of providing all that urban infrastructure is entirely borne by the residents and businesses of Perry Sound. Uh, yet all those services benefit all West Perry Sound. They all take advantage of those services. And uh, that is a big, uh, a big cost the town bears by itself. Uh, the current municipal structure doesn't allow for the cost to be borne in any other manner. This issue is further compounded by the fact that many of the properties that deliver these services are exempt from property taxation. So not only does uh, the, uh, the town provide the infrastructure so that these facilities, hospitals and schools can exist, uh, the properties that provide those services are exempt from taxation. And the amount of property that's exempt from town 17% of the town's assessment base is exempt from property taxes. And that's huge relative to other municipalities in the area. So we pay for the costs uh, that's borne by the residents and businesses. And then there's a lot of properties in town that are exempt. So uh, those two are the, I would say are the main factors why Mr. Chalk's taxes and other taxes in, in Perry Sound are higher than the area municipalities. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, reports. We're going to start with Councillor Burden. He's online. And can you hear me? Hear you now. Yep. Okay, I'm going to make this real easy. 
I haven't had any meetings since the last council meeting, so I have absolutely nothing to report. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. All right. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Bornemann. Thank you. I'll be a little more long-winded than Councillor Bird. And on September 28th, I attended a, the meeting of the Belvedere Board of Management. We heard that the uh, voice of the resident program is becoming more active um, as a re strangely, I think, as a result of the, out the COVID outbreak that the home experienced in August. At any rate, I think it's a, a, a positive that we're having greater feedback from the residents and their families and the staff there. I, I see nothing but good things coming out of that. The board set the, the date for its annual AGM to uh, January 23rd, 2023 at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, this rather late date was uh, chosen as a result of the municipal election and incoming council appointments uh, to the board. Uh, we welcome Dr. Knight as the home's uh, new medical uh, practitioner. <clears throat> Public health attended the home following that August COVID outbreak and identified no gaps in, in service or protocols, uh, which is a positive thing as well. Staff at the home are reviewing the Fixing the Long-Term uh, Care Act. Provinces brought in to play a number of regulations with the threat of monetary penalty for failing to comply, but they've brought no further dollars to the table to allow for compliance. So it's a bit of a tap dance to try to make both budget and regulation work together. <clears throat> September 30th, I attended the Truth and Reconciliation event at the Town Dock. Uh, I know you'll have plenty to say about this, Your Worship, so I'll just say that I think it was a positive first step in building a, a better relationship within our community. Uh, earlier today, I attended a meeting of the Airport Commission. Fuel and cafe sales are doing well. Uh, Mother Nature has blessed us with a, another good fly month. The Commission has adopted its uh, new strap plan, and it will be brought forward to Council in the near future. Uh, the runway is progressing um, pretty much as anticipated at this point. Um, closure of the runway is expected between mid-April and mid-June of next year to allow for uh, final preparation of, of the, the new runway. I expect that there will probably be some variances to that schedule over the next few months, but who am I to say? <laughs> and that's my report for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McKeon. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, fellow councillors, uh, staff and public. Uh, we didn't have an opportunity to report on our uh, events and meetings at our last council meeting. So just very briefly, uh, back in early September the 12th, I attended the Waterfront Advisory Committee meeting. Councillor Keith uh, uh, was in that as well. And uh, we discussed some things that we had actually talked about at the last council meeting uh, in terms of the expected and anticipated growth of uh, the uh, cruise ship industry uh, expanding into the Great Lakes. And we can look forward to, to that in the coming year. I'm told that there will be between six to eight different cruise ships uh, arriving uh, next uh, year. Uh, so we look forward to, to that. Uh, the public library board meeting was held September 14th, and uh, we welcome new board members, Jonathan Baxter and Sandy Bishop. And of course, uh, regular business uh, taking a hand. Also want to acknowledge and thank the uh, Perry Sound Rotary Club uh, for its $2,000 uh, donation towards the English language uh, learning material uh, that uh, benefits uh, the, the library and enhances and increases the services that it has to offer. And then, of course, uh, Councillor Borneman mentioned the Belvedere Heights Board of Management meeting. I attended that. Um, I tendered my uh, resignation officially, and then I stayed on uh, the call uh, as a guest. 
And I thank the board for um, uh, the uh, seven years that I uh, enjoyed. I learned a lot. It certainly opened my my uh, eyes and ears to what long-term care is all about. And it's a lot more than just warehousing uh, seniors and elders. Uh, it's about looking after them. It's about the fact that uh, we build them not a house or building, but a home. And uh, as Belvedere, Lakeland, long-term care and the West Perry Sound Health Center look towards a model uh, or a campus of care model in the future, I encouraged uh, our board to uh, uh, really embrace and harbor the uh, Belvedere brand as uh, we pick it up and relocate it at some point, uh, <laughs> I think a few years from now. So uh, my thanks and I wish the board uh, good luck in its future endeavors. Um, then, uh, the, uh, my final meeting was with the West Prairie Sound District Museum on the following day, Thursday, uh, managers, uh, report budget versus actuals expenditures and revenues, uh, were reviewed. Uh, we try to look over one, uh, policy at every meeting. Our exhibition policy was on the table, no changes there. Um, discussion about signage so that people driving through town and visiting town know where to find us. And uh, we've struck an ad hoc committee. Um, I'm part of that committee that to, will look into uh, signage throughout the, uh, the area. Uh, just to let you know, the museum is closed this week until the 7th as the uh, staff and volunteers uh, empty. Uh, there's uh, the barn, which is on site. It's been used as a storage uh, for some time, and the items are going to be placed into a, uh, a storage container for the winter to allow for a freeze and thaw cycle, which will hopefully kill any insect eggs that may have on the item. Stuff's been in there for a long time. And once the uh, the stuff has been, been cleaned and uh, uh, cataloged, it'll be put back into uh, exhibition. And we talked about the state of George Street. We're talking about roads tonight and the condition. Uh, the museum, between the museum and Forest Street, George Street uh, is in bad uh, need of repair. Museum board felt it was justified in uh, taking a good look at it as uh, we anticipate some 10,000 visitors to the museum a year. Uh, and uh, well over that number, of course, are visitors to the uh, the uh, Tower Hill Gardens and uh, the bus tours that come up to uh, the museum uh, as well. So we're hoping that uh, at some point we can look at putting something in the budget for uh, remediation of the uh, George Street, particularly that end of it. And uh, we're also looking at trying to improve our broadband at the museum. We could uh, we could stand with a better, faster uh, connection that's than what's possible there right now. And that's my report. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor McCann. Actually, Mr. Kearns and I talked about George Street today as maybe a street test street for this new um, process that he was talking about in in the question period there. And uh, but. They've started construction on the apartment building, so I think until the construction's done, it isn't you know? Then mm -hmm. then maybe we can begin to take a look at it. But it is a street, yeah. one of the streets that's in bad need of repair. Oh, yeah. um, but I also would like to say, Councillor McCann, thank you for all the volunteer work that you've done for Belvedere, and I certainly think that they're hoping that you will continue to do that because um, that has helped raise through the bottle collections and everything thousands of dollars as you've mentioned yeah. before, for Belvedere, which is, is needed. Yeah. So, the, thank yeah. you. Friends of Belvedere, the ladies that started up had raised probably some $90,000. And uh, uh, my wife and I have probably brought in another twenty one or $2,000 since we got involved with it. Yeah. Uh, so it's now under the auspices of the uh, Community Support Services directly as the Friends of Belvedere have retired. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. And yes, I will continue to work with them and as a driver for Community Support Services. So right. thank you. Appreciate that. I think they'll I think they'll appreciate it as well. So Councillor Backman. Thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, everybody. On Wednesday, uh, September 7th, I was to attend a assess accessibility meeting. Unfortunately, we couldn't coordinate with the Zoom uh, to function properly, properly, so I was only able to hand in my questions and uh, we'll report on any uh, minutes at a later time. 
I attended the, uh, on September 12th, the 3D milling presentation and uh, appreciated watching that. And um, I did uh, have the opportunity to see uh, some of the work actually going down that you referenced on Park Lane today. Um, so it was interesting just to see all the, the different uh, technologies being used. And I've had some really great uh, feedback uh, from the work being done on the roads. Um, on September 14th, I attended the library board meeting where we were presented with the um, annual report. Um, and I really appreciate the efforts that staff have put into this report. And I am certain that this council and staff will really appreciate uh, the annual report that the library will be bringing forth uh, in the next uh, a few weeks. Um, one of the things that I have mentioned um, at this board is through my research of trying to look at um, sustainability of funding based on the conversations um, you know that we've had uh, with the board and with the town. Um, so one of the con concepts is that uh, there is such a thing as friends of the library that uh, many uh, communities have at their libraries, um, and I understand that our library may have had um, something similar in the past, and this was an opportunity um, that our chair at the library is um, um, communicating with other uh, libraries about to better understand their process, and if it's an opportunity for a potential um, um, savings uh, to, of course, support um, and, and opportunities for growth for a library. Um, I continue, uh, um, I met with the interagency meeting, um, which continues to meet and uh, we work forward um, closely with various organizations, including the OPP. Um, currently, one of the issues is just a gap um, in the dissemination of information at critical times when, um, for instance, um, uh, um, organizations such as the OPP may require um, assistance um, in off hours when uh, many of our local organizations. So we're trying to, again, determine where uh, some of these gaps are, have been identified through these uh, different agencies. Um, and hopefully in uh, this fall, we will um, connect again, moving forward, planning um, to continue meeting and growing the group um, to include other municipalities. On September uh, 14th, I attended the West Ferry Sound Recreation and Cultural uh, Center board meeting. I also attended on September um, 20th, the uh, Park to Park board meeting. We continue to um, do a lot of great uh, work on the trail. Uh, we focus this year again on uh, maintenance and product development through um, grants with FedNOR and TransCanada Trail. We've been very successful to the tune of nearly $200,000. Um, so this has allowed us to um, contribute to the tourism product um, across the region, uh, which will of course benefit Perry Sound, and as well to ensure that um, we're able to continue growing this regional asset and trying as we move forward, we will be um, bringing on more municipal partners um, in this fall that have seen the work that uh, both Perry Sound and Seguin have collaborated on this um, organization and what we've achieved. So we've kind of developed a framework that we believe that we can now um, utilize as a template model to bring back uh, many of the municipalities that previously were um, part of Park to Park on our board and um, grow it. Um, the way um, that it needs to be, because we do know that this is a trail that extends uh, 230 kilometers from Kilbear to Algonquin, and it passes through uh, many 
municipalities, both in Perry Sound and Muskoka. And so when I speak about building the relationships, um, we are also building relationships on the West with Muskoka and bringing those uh, municipalities back on board. So um, we're really putting a lot of um, efforts and I would like to um, just congratulate uh, this board on a job well done and of course our volunteers. And then lastly, I attended um, two more um, meetings, the Chamber Gala actually on September 21st, and I'd like to congratulate all the nominees and the business uh, award winners, as well as on September 30th, I attended the Truth and Reconciliation event, which um, I concur with Councillor Borneman's uh, sentiments that it was a great step in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Keith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow councillors, staff, and the public. Uh, the first uh, committee meeting, the Waterfront uh, Advisory Committee, that has been reported on. I attended that. And in addition, uh, when the ship uh, Labello uh, came to uh, Perry Sound, I att attended that, welcoming the passengers. And it was also appreciated that Teresa, who um, was had a good command of the French language, she was a French interpreter, did a fine job in welcoming passengers to Perry Sound. And it was interesting because the cruise ship was only supposed to be here for four hours and ended up being here eight hours. So that's uh, good for us. And I think it sends a message again that we are a welcoming port and there's only good things that can happen here. I also attended the Accessibility Advisory Committee. Uh, basically, we have now uh, roughly seven members uh, attended. Uh, a couple were in Zoom. And as Councillor uh, Bachman indicated, there were some difficulties with, with her computer, but she was still able to ask some uh, valid questions. And uh, we are hoping at the next committee meeting that we can have a, a description of the sidewalk policy. I think that will be helpful uh, to the committee in understanding uh, what is possible in our community. And certainly there was uh, quite a bit of time spent on recognizing people who have uh, various uh, disabilities, how we can uh, best assist them in town and how important it is to recognize there's different uh, disabilities and how they need to be looked at in different ways when you're trying to provide service for people. Uh, on uh, September 30th, I attended a, uh, a workshop which uh, was uh, centering on truth and reconciliation as I was working full time that day. Uh, it was uh, over two hours, the workshop. So it had a lot of um, very uh, helpful uh, information in, in that you certainly were, a, the importance was to listen and learn from the uh, unfortunate uh, experiences and a uh, terrible experiences that uh, people, Indigenous people, have suffered over over the years, and then to try to think of how can we all not only and listen and learn, uh, try to do better, and how do we accomplish that? So that was a uh, very uh, caused you really to give a lot of thought and 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 concern of how can we do better. Yesterday evening, the town, uh, and I was really glad to see this, had sponsored with uh, uh, Zoo, Zoo Heck, Aspen Valley Wildlife Sanctuary and Perry Sound Pet Loss Support Group. And that had to do with coexisting with black bears. And we know that there have been back black bears in this community and how do we coexist with that? And certainly Dr. John Beecham is a bear uh, biologist and he is um, has his PhD from the University of Montana. Now this, um, workshop was roughly two hours and it was also because it was interactive and it was also zoom people from all over could participate in it and there was easily uh 50 questions because there was a panel 
and that panel uh, would receive the questions and then would present them to the doctor. And so they were able to tabulate the questions. It was really quite informative. And I think one of the important purposes there was again, to uh, prepare people to understand, you've got to get yourself educated and understand that uh, bears don't have to be seen as our enemy, but rather respecting uh, and understanding their behavior because we are in a community where those things are going to happen just as uh, deer come into our community also. So that's my report and thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, I am gonna skip back because there were a couple of things from our last report that I did want to mention um, in the last meeting. Um, September 9th, I attended the Science North presentation at the museum and Science North is launching a hands-on program called Northern Nature Exchange. And anyone, uh, adult, child, um, can sign up for the program in which you can gain points by trading or bringing in something from nature that anyone can examine. Uh, you can sign up at the museum where there is a display. And Perry Sound is only a handful of Northern Ontario communities that actually have one of these displays. Uh, in their communities, and thankfully it's at our museum, which I thought was was wonderful. Uh, Science North, while they were here as well, on September 10th, um, had a day at Market Square Park where they had vendors come in uh, that made their own uh, their own wares of different kinds, that sort of thing. There were educational sessions and vendors, and it was a great two-day event. Uh, they even had a stage set up where they do different experiments on stage and the kids could sit in the gallery and watch and, and thank goodness the weather held. So uh, I really have to thank Science North team, the team for coming to Perry Sound, reaching out and uh, putting the effort in here and it's really appreciated. Uh, as was mentioned, September 12th was the 3D milling information session at the Stocky Center. Uh, very interesting and well attended. It's been interesting to see it actually in action and, and how it's been working. It was also a pleasure to meet uh, Eva Liebs um, Bartanova, who is the Consulate General of the Czech Republic in Toronto. And I know that our Economic Development Officer, uh, Vlad, will be following up on certainly initiatives. Um, it was, they, they wanna do more in Canada, Ontario and hey, Perry Sound. So, and then September 14th at 7 p.m., there was a pool committee meeting. Public would be interested to know that an RFP is being developed for the architectural services and the design team, and also the construction mythology. So uh, things are moving, which, which is good. Um, then September 23rd, I attended the Chamber of Commerce Business Awards on the Island Queen. Congratulations to all the winners. It was very well deserved and it was a well attended event. Uh, September 26th at 10 a.m., I attended the First Nations Survivors flag raising at the town office. On hand were a group of ladies from the Friendship Center to perform a ceremony. And I really appreciated this, at this as it was the first time that we have raised the survivor's flag. And we were given, when we got the survivor's flag, we were given these brochures. And um, in the brochure are the, um, the different meanings of the symbols on the flag. And um, yeah, certainly something that I, I think if someone wanted one, we could have them at the town office. There are some down in the reception area. There are some down in the reception area, that's good. Um, the, the ladies from the Friendship Center all wanted one because uh, this was something new to them as well. Um, and they really appreciated it. And I had to appreciate them for being there as well. Uh, September 28th at 5 p.m. I attended the North Bay Perry Sound District Health Unit meeting. And they are looking at make some, some changes to their office location. And more will be coming on that later. Uh, September 30th was the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, and at 10.30 attended the ceremony at the town dock. I was really pleased at the turnout. There were school children there, there was different other groups, that sort of thing. But um, just to have the number of people that were out there um, was 
totally awesome. Uh, there was a number of speakers, including myself, um, but we it opened with uh, Dave Rice welcoming in an opening prayer. Then the little spirit singers sang an opening song. And then the uh, speakers were Dina Bomberry, Chief Tababadong, uh, Connie Foster, Rob Baskey, Carrie Tababadong, Alan Lewis, Melissa Jackson. And all gave their, their recounts of um, possibly themselves or family and things that had happened to them. So, you know, the, the stories were, were very touching. Um, you know, the sadness and the struggles that they had to endure, um, you know, through this is, uh, I don't know, it's pretty hard to put into words, but it, it is, it, you know, they, they survived and they st struggled and, you know, they're trying to move forward, which I think is really well, and we need to pay attention to the stories and the accounts of what happened to them to move forward to a better place. So um, it was a well done, great event, and hopefully next year bigger and there's more stories and we're able to hear, hear more. Uh, on September 30th in the afternoon, I was invited to uh, Wasoxing First Nation. Uh, our MP, Scott Aitchison, MPP, uh, Graydon Smith, and the Minister of Indigenous Affairs, the Honorable Mark Miller. I was invited to out there so we could have a conversation. Um, I want to thank Chief Tababadong for extending the inf information, and I also want to say thank you for their hospitality. Um, it's very well done. Um, it was it was it was good to have the minister in our area uh, for this particular uh, meeting, and he brought a number of staff. And one of his staff members is um, actually from the Soxing, so he was able to come home for <laughs> the the actual event. So, which was nice. Um, and then at five thirty, um, I attended. Uh, on the 30th, I attended a walk through town organized by Crystal Tuavadong, honoring truth and reconciliation, and ended up being one of the banner carriers for, for the event. So it was uh, a long day, but a worthwhile day of learning, and which is really important. That's my report. Okay. Moved by Councillor Borneman, seconded by Councillor McCann. The council accept the tender from Adams Brothers Construction Limited for snow removal on the town streets during the 2022 fall and winter season and the 2023 winter and spring season, including traffic control and labor costs to clear around infrastructure, including tree pits and hydrants as follows. Tandem dump truck, $98 per hour. Wheeled loader, $108 per hour blower and control unit $108 per hour this being the only tender received discussion Councillor Keith thank you uh, Mr. Mayor uh, Mr. Karen so I'm not really clear on why do you think it is that we merely had one bid is there some way that we're not uh, whatever putting out information or advertising out or is there another uh, supposition you might have yeah, mr your worship um i would suggest that this is on an as needed basis and it's a fairly large commitment um, of equipment without any guarantee of work so it perhaps is not uh, doesn't appeal to as many companies as something that uh, is a guaranteed quantity of work through the winter season. So what I heard there, you got to be a little bit of a gambler or hopeful. Is that about it? Uh, through your worship or, or anticipate a particularly harsh winter. <laughs> Could the other part of it, Mr. Kearns, also be that, you know, a lot of companies are running pretty short staff because they're trying to find employees and maybe they're already at their limit for work that they might have already scheduled possibility um your worship certainly uh, i think especially in this day and age that's uh, certainly a, 
a good possibility in addition to uh, it being less than you can't uh, schedule around this. So. No, that's right. Yeah. Anything further? Nope. All in favor? That's carried. None opposed. Moved by Councillor Bachman and seconded by Councillor Keith that the corporate the council of the corporation of the town of Perry Sound support the request of Legend Spirits Company and endorse their application to obtain a by the glass endorsement to serve their products for consumption in single servings at the production site directly related to the promotion of the product to enhance the tourist experience in or fulfill an educational purpose only. Any discussion? Councilor McCann? I see that uh, Ms. Johnson is the spokesperson for this item. Perhaps you could describe for the public what this is all about. It sounds like a good idea. Through you, Your Worship. Um, we received this application from Legend Spirits Company for the Buy the Glass endorsement. And that is, as the resolution is expressing, to um, simply have an opportunity for patrons to sample uh, by the glass the product at Legend Spirits. Uh, and in order to obtain a license to do this, they need a council resolution supporting this. So this has been um, circulated through the various town departments and there is no objection. There's, a, you know, support. This is, this is acceptable. So the resolution appears before council tonight. So follow up then. So they still need a, a, a license from the Liquor Control Board to, to finalize this then? Yes, this is part of their, this resolution accompanies their application form for this particular type of endorsement. It is just for the, by the glass. Yeah. It's not a restaurant license. It's it's nothing more than than just that. Great, thank you, Councillor Keith. Well, thank you, um, Ms. Johnson. Maybe you can explain this a little further because I'm lost. So, therefore, if this is approved to, tonight, then even when um, this company gets the liquor license, does this mean it's something like the idea of when you go to a winery, you can have a sample? Or, I, I'm, I'm just not getting the physical idea of what it is that's happening here. That's what I understand it is, it is like, yes. It's, it's a sample or... A, it's a sample. Yes. And those the, samples basically would be at other places where you might be able to... I'm not saying it's a hotel, but whether it was a distillery or a brewery or something like that, then you could go there and you could try these taste test little samples. Is this what basically it is? That's what I understand this is. So then does that mean that this is just in the town of Perry Sound? Like I'm trying to get a gist here. It's just this, at their location. Just at their location. For yes. Legend Spirits, yes. yes. Oh, it's, oh. it's just it's their applic it's an application by them for this endorsement at their location only. I'm sorry if I didn't understand that. Okay, that, that was your question. Okay, yeah. thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, Councillor Keith. Yes. So, is this a one-time approval that they need? They wouldn't have to come back annually or biannually to say, hey, can we do this again? Is, is this a one-time job? I understand that it's one time. I I I mean if it's more than that, then they would they would have to be following the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario's rules around that. Yeah. But I I believe it's just one time. Okay. We're good. All in favor? Okay. That's carried. None opposed. Thank you. I could have said we could raise a glass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, moved by Councillor Keith and seconded by Councillor Bachman. Uh, that Council hereby approves the 2023 budgeting schedule set out in the attached Schedule A. Any discussion? Councillor Barnum? We can do this tonight, but I'm I'm expecting that it will have to be reviewed by the next group of people sitting here. So I'm wondering if there is 
some point in deferring this till the first meeting of the new council or at least having it brought back to be confirmed at that point. Ms. Phillips. Uh, so right now, through you, Mr. Mayor, tonight's report just in, it includes a 2023 budget schedule for council's approval, but at a later date, we'll bring forward some more information such as guidelines and things like that for the new council. So it could be uh, confirmed or brought up for their information at that time to see if there's any issues. Councillor Keith, you want to say something? Yes, I was just going to say, I do, I do think we should go forward with it tonight. And it just seems to me whenever there's budget meetings, this always comes back and we have a revised schedule. So I think we should move forward tonight and I'm sure it'll come back with the new council, but let's move ahead. Okay. May as well, it's not going to hurt. Um, any other comments? No, all in favor then? <laughs> Any opposed? No? Okay, that's carried. Moved by Councillor Keith and seconded by Councillor Bachman, the bylaw number 2022-7285 being the bylaw to regulate proceedings, sorry, the processing, washing, sorting, screening, or crushing of uh, rock, sand, gravel, or any other material in the town of Perry Sound be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? That's carried. Move by, oops. We need a, another signature. by Councillor Keith and second by Councillor Bachman that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time passed, signed, and sealed. Discussion. Councillor McCann. Uh, thank you. I know this doesn't concern the children who do uh, tumbling and uh, stone polishing, so this must be something bigger. <laughs> Could we, uh, uh, for the public's benefit, get an explanation of what this is all about? Through your worship. Uh, this was an update to the crushing bylaw uh, that's being proposed because we had specific uh, situations of crushing, uh, and this is like a construction style crushing of material uh, that weren't included in our current bylaw. Uh, so there was um, a project last year that uh, it was determined at that time that we were missing a piece uh, that crushing operations as a result of uh, demolition was not included in the in the crushing bylaw that we had currently. Uh, and this was seen as an issue um, as we didn't have any control via a permit over those activities. Um, and obviously it, the crushing is similar to crushing that would occur as a result of construction projects. So we did want to be able to regulate um, the crushing that is a result of demolition. And therefore the bylaw was um, updated. Uh, that was the main um, update to the bylaw. There was some updates to wording and a few changes other than that, but essentially it has remained the same, um, whereby crushing operations have to meet our zoning bylaws setback of 200 meters from residential areas in order to limit the impact um, while still allowing for um, crushing operations where appropriate in town. This bylaw was circulated in its draft form to the uh, construct the major construction companies within the Perry Sound area. Uh, so they did have an opportunity to comment on both the draft bylaw and the draft application um, that we're presenting uh, so that we could incorporate their feedback. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? No, all in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Moved by Councilor McCann, second by Councilor Borneman, that bylaw number 2022 7286. A bylaw to amend Schedule C of fees 
and service charges, bylaw 2010-5408 it to include a crushing permit application fee be considered as read a first time. All in favor? Carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? That's carried. Moved by Councillor Borneman, seconded by Councillor McCann, that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. Any discussion? Councillor Keith. Yes, thank you. I'm wondering if Ms. Kruger can um, clarify to me. I noticed that the crushing application fee was $500. How does that compare to other areas? Are we shortchanging ourselves or are we on average? Through your worship, um, there aren't a lot of other crushing bylaws out there um, as a comparable. We did look at uh, the previous fee, uh, which was $150, and that was set back in 2001 when the uh, original crushing bylaw came into effect. So we did want to obviously capture a fee that would cover you know, the processing of the application. Uh, this does get reviewed by obviously the departments within the town um, to ensure that we are um, reviewing it so that they are using appropriate mitigation measures, uh, for things such as dust and noise, uh, those things that would affect residents. Um, so we tried to find a fee that would cover uh, that, the cost of processing the application, as well as some public inquiry without being prohibitive to, to the construction project or the demolition project. Okay. Any other questions, comments? No, all in favor? That's carried. Just <laughs> big drop in salary. <laughs> <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Keith and second by Councillor Backland that bylaw number 2022-7287, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council, be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings, and that's carried. Moved by Councillor Keith and seconded by Councillor Bachman that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. All in favor, and that's carried. So prior to adjourning, I'd like to offer the following information to the public regarding the next council meeting. Next regular meeting of council for the town of Perry Sound is scheduled for Tuesday, October the 18th, 2022 at 7 p.m. The meeting will be held at the town of Perry Sound Council Chambers at 52 Siegman Street, entrance via Gibson Street. It'll be live streamed and recorded. All regular council meetings are held at 7 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of each month, except January and August where only one regular meeting is scheduled. The council meeting schedule notices of special council meetings, complete agendas and minutes and instructions on accessing live streamed and recorded council meetings are all posted on the town's website. Go to www.perrysound.ca under news and public notices. Your TV airs council meetings on Saturday at 9.30 a.m. following a regular council meeting. For Kojiko listings, contact www.yourtv.tv. Thank you, everyone, and have a great night.